my bedroom. What's the date today? It's June 25th. Believe it or not, I'm sitting right here. Two weeks in the future. But I, I don't understand. There's a crime that in your time hasn't yet happened. Your dad's gonna die. Your mom's gonna die. And so are you. But as long as you're alive, what is up, AC and Insiders? Francesca here, and I am speaking to the man, the myth, the legend, David Oyelowo. He has been seen in Selma, also the butler, and most recently, maybe you saw him in Oprah's Instagram videos. I don't know, vacationing, okay? <laughs> this man does it all. He's one of the most dynamic and charismatic actors out there, and now we're seeing a lot more of you in your most recent film, Don't Let Go, also starring Storm Reid. That's right. So welcome to the AC. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here My and helping pleasure. me with your last name because that was a tongue twister for me. <laughs> you did really well. So I watched this film yeah. just last night and when I tell you it took my breath away, first and foremost, give us a sense of why you wrote this movie and where did it come from? Well, the reason I really wanted to do the film, as a father myself, I really understand what it is to be prepared to do anything you could to save your child from harm. And in this film, I play a detective, Jack Radcliffe, who has this wonderful niece, as played by Storm Reid, and they have this beautiful relationship, but a terrible tragedy happens. Yeah. My family is killed, and, uh, and she is one of those murdered. And somehow, I get this phone call from her in the middle of my grieving process and she is calling me from two weeks before her murder. So I figure out that there may be a way to reach through time and save her. And it's very interesting because this, this movie draws at your, the question, uh, how far, literally, would you go to save your loved one? Right. How did you create this futuristic slash past concept that these view that the viewer myself goes through while watching? Well, you know, we all love time travel movies, whether it's Back to the Future or Edge of Tomorrow, Groundhog Day, you know, there are these uh, uh, films that have taken that conceit and maybe to action yeah. or comedy. This is, a, I guess, a psychological thriller in a sense, a whodunit, but also <laughs> it's very much rooted in an unconventional love story, you know, between this uncle and his niece. It's a familial love story in a sense. And so it has all these genre elements, but really the, the, the thrust through it is this emotional tug. How did you get Storm to rise to the occasion while you were on set? Because that was, I mean, this was tough to do, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, well, I, I didn't have to do much work. She is stupendously yeah. talented. I mean, I went on the set of uh, A Wrinkle in Time that she did before this film, and I saw that talent. Mm. I had a front row seat to it, and I just knew that she had uh, the ability to tackle what is a very, very difficult role. I mean, the level of emotional intelligence she yeah. had to have to, to do this, and she does it so, so well. And you also do something very well. We already know you act very well, but Les Miserables, okay, we saw your directing debut there. Now we're seeing you directing, writing, acting. What kind of sprung this whole wanting to be also behind the camera? Well, to me, representation is a huge part of what I feel is also part of what I want to do um, as, as someone who's been afforded a huge amount of blessing in, in my, uh, my chosen career. And so I want to see people who look like me, who don't look like me, who are underrepresented, uh, both in front of and behind the camera. And anything I can do to instigate that is something I'm interested in. Which is why he also has a production company of his own and probably <laughs> a very proud family. Your yeah. Nigerian father who uh, yes. lives with you in Los Angeles. That's Did he right. see the movie yet? He hasn't yet. He's seeing it next Tuesday. Okay, so what yeah. do you think he is going to say about <laughs> I think he's going to be freaked out uh, because it is a pretty intense uh, movie. But, I, you know, this theme of love, my father is the place I learned how to love. Mm. He is just the most extraordinary person when it comes to that attribute. And so I, I hope he sees himself mm. in my character in terms of how prepared I am to to do anything I could for my loved ones. Could you give me one antidote, you know, just thinking back on on living with your father, even though I know you live with him now, but mm -hmm. thinking back on being raised by your father, could you give me one antidote where he or you rose to the occasion of just making sure that you went to the length to mm. make sure that you were taken care of or that you were okay? Well, I was bullied at school and I remember coming home one day someone had punched me in the face I was, I was all swollen up and this person as they were beating me up they had said you think you're better than me don't you and I went home and I just felt so 
awful and my, and my dad, you know, I just wanted to lash out. I wanted to go back to school. I wanted to be what that bully wanted me to be, yeah. which is to be, be, be truant, be swearing at teachers. That was what this bully, you know, took umbrage with. And my dad said, do you think you're better than, mm. than that person? I said, no, I, 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 that's not what I was thinking. And, and he said, do you know who you are? I said, yeah, I feel like you've taught me who I am. And he said, hold on to that. And Powerful. that, to me, it's just, it was a formative moment for me to not feel like I had to become someone else because I was being bullied and to recognize that my dad saw me for who I am mm. and was happy for that to be who I continue to be. Okay, let me ask you this one, one of my last questions for you. Just filming on the set, where were you? Where did you guys film? What were the dynamics of the entire cast? Yeah, we shot in Los Angeles. We shot in South Central LA. Mm. And um, it was a really a beautiful experience. Uh, Michael T. Williamson, who's a, 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 someone I've been a fan on for so long, is in the movie. Alfred Molina as well. Brian Tyree Henry. Yeah. Really amazing cast. And, uh, you know, everyone came to the film with the right attitude, which is, you know, what would we all do to, for someone we loved? And that theme kept us together as a cast during shooting. And congratulations to you being honored tonight. Oh, yes. At the, yeah. oh, that whole thing? Yes. The whole Trailblazer <laughs> Award by the Bronze Lens Festival, that small thing. Like, congratulations. Yes. I mean, Thank you're you. so dynamic. Is there anything else that you want our AC and insiders to know how to keep up with you? Not necessarily your social media, but right. what you have next. Well, I have a film that I directed called The Waterman, which I'm in post-production on right now. It's my directorial Excuse debut. Excuse me. So I'm, uh, I'm really proud uh, about that. And uh, I have a... a Number of films coming out over the next few months, so you'll be hearing about those. You see yourself holding the director's head a little bit more? I think so. I really, really enjoyed it, and I just love storytelling, so um, hopefully. And my last challenge to him, he better film it in, in Georgia. That's, I that's what we're looking to. for next. I would love to. I would I've done you a couple gotta, of films here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Add a little to yeah. our economy, okay, David? <laughs> make sure you're adding to Done deal. Boomin economy. And speaking of adding to our economy, make sure you add to our economy as well. Go watch Don't Let Go. It comes out August 30th, and it is a fantastic movie that makes you go, whoa, what in the world just happened? It's a must-see. Coming out August 30th nationwide.